Let's do another task with the help of the dot product, which is to decompose the vector v with respect to three vectors, a1, a2, and a3, in three dimensions. I have a two-dimensional picture there, but there, the whole thing is happening in three dimensions. So it's the question of linear decomposition. And as you know, the question of linear decomposition occupies a very prominent place in linear algebra. I would say it's as much as one third of as much as one third of linear algebra is occupied with linear decomposition. I call it the first pillar of linear algebra. The second pillar of linear algebra is linear transformations, and the third pillar of linear algebra is everything having to do with the dot product. This is where the two world, the two pillars meet. So our quest, our problem is to decompose the vector v with respect to a given basis, a1, a2, and a3. And if you have only geometric means at your disposal, this problem can be solved by drawing lots of planes parallel to sets of vectors and so forth. There is a geometric construction that will produce the decomposition coefficients. We're going to do it with the help of the dot product. No geometric construction at all, no geometric algorithms, no geometric insight, just algebra. And we'll do it in the special case where the three vectors are mutually orthogonal. So it's a set like this, except we're not assuming that they're all equal length. So our goal is to reduce the problem of linear decomposition to an arithmetic, perhaps algebraic problem. What we're, the only thing that we're allowed to do is evaluate the dot product and then, of course, calculate linear combinations and do whatever arithmetic things we want to do. Okay, so let me label the fact that these angles are all orthogonal. That kind of connotes it, doesn't it? Okay, and our goal is to decompose the vector v as a linear combination of v1, a1, a2, and a3. Okay, our decomposition coefficients are alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. And I'm going to carry out the procedure that most of you, are probably all of you, are already familiar with, and you know the answer that's coming. But once again, pay attention to the context. There are two important points here that are, that are going unsaid, except I'm going to say them now. Number one is that there are no coordinate systems in sight. We're dealing with vectors directly, their lengths, their angles, their geometric properties, no coordinate systems at all. No basis has been chosen, although you can think of A1, A2, and A3 as a basis, but that's not the point here. They're just three vectors. There's no background basis with respect to which we'll decompose A1, A2, and A3. We're going to deal with them directly as geometric objects. That's one important context element of the context. And the other one is that the dot product is very powerful. This will be yet another problem that we can solve strictly in terms of the dot product. And so I want you to start uh, gaining the experience that the dot product has the power to express just about everything in geometry. It's not a theorem, it's experience. So of course you know what I'm about to do. I will take this identity and I will dot both sides with A1. <coughs> Bless you. And then I'll use the distributive law and whatever other law of, that the dot product satisfies. And let's see what happens. I will take, I'm now going to take this identity and dot both sides with A1. I'll use commutativity right away. I'll write A1 on the right of, B, of V but on the left of this expression just because. Another thing I want to sneak in is that, of course, you've seen this before, and of course, you know where this is going and what the answer will be. You've seen this calculation, but most of you have probably seen it in the context of linear algebra, where the distributive property, the commutative property, and positive definiteness, all of which will be used here, are the definition of the dot product. So keep in mind that our definition right now continues to be length of one, times length of the other, times the cosine of the angle between them. It's just that we have that 
dot product genie that will always do it for us when we need it. Okay, so we know that the dot product satisfies the distributive property. Okay, great. What's the next thing we notice? Well, how do we take advantage of the fact that this set of vectors is orthogonal? That's right, out of the three terms, only two survive. A1 is orthogonal to A2, so this is gone. A1 is orthogonal to A3, so this is gone. All that's left is just alpha, the term with alpha 1. So we can divide both terms by A1 dotted with A1, divided by that number. And how do we know that that number is not 0? That's right, it's the length of A1. And how do we know that the length of A1 is, excuse me, it's the length of A1 squared. And how do we know that the length of A1 is not 0? Linear algebra question? Well, because if it were 0, this would be a linearly dependent set. And when you have a linearly dependent set with three vectors in three dimensions, good luck with your decomposition problem. So the fact that this is a linearly independent set is a given. By all means, a beautiful formula. It shows that when the set is orthogonal, we can get the decomposition vectors, one, excuse me, the decomposition coefficients one at a time. Usually it involves solving, usually a linear decomposition problem involves solving a coupled linear system. But not when the basis is orthogonal. When the basis is orthogonal, you can get your coefficients one at a time simply by evaluating two dot products. You have to dot the vector with a corresponding element of the basis and then divided by that element of the basis dotted with itself. And by similar logic, we will get similar expressions for alpha 2 and alpha 3. So let's write them down. So we can get all of the decomposition coefficients one at a time. Now the situation would be even better if this basis was not only orthogonal, but orthonormal. Orthonormal means that these vectors are not only orthogonal to each other, but also each one unit length. When all vectors in the set are unit length, all of the denominators are, e are equal to 1. So in that case, all you need to do is dot, is dot the vector with the corresponding basis element. Beautiful. Physicists use the, well, I was going to say that physicists use this all the time. Everybody uses this all the time. And you should, and in my mind, it's just a correspondence that's been hardwired into my brain. If you need to do decomposition with respect to ortho an orthogonal basis, dot it with the corresponding basis element. And you might say, why would I need to do that if all I need to do in this case is just draw up an altitude, and that gives me my coefficient, as long as I scale appropriately for the length of A. You're right, but that's a geometric way of thinking. Parallel to it is the algebraic way of thinking. This is a way to do this algebraically. The benefit at this point is limited, maybe I would say, just interesting. But as we get into differentiation and vector calculus, the benefit will be enormous. The benefit will be, it will be the whole point of the subject. Because it's the dot product, and basically, and in addition to the dot product, our entire algebraic framework that will allow us to perform calculus directly on these beautiful geometric objects. One last note. Let's go in the opposite direction. What if this set of vectors was not even orthogonal. So we couldn't cancel these terms right here. Does this approach still work? Well, how does it work? We would end up here with one equation, but now we'll have three unknowns, alpha 1, alpha 2, and alpha 3. Let's think about what will happen.
So we'll, we're no longer, hey, we don't need the picture anymore. We've got algebra. We've got the dot product. <coughs> so I will not rewrite this, but let's see what happens here is that these terms are still here. So we have one equation and three unknowns. We cannot solve for alpha 1 or any of the other alphas. So what saves the day? But it's the next two steps. When you next dot it with a2, you will get another equation with the same three unknowns. And then you'll dot it with a3, and you'll get another third equation with the same three unknowns. And you'll end up with three equations and three unknowns. The matrix will be 3 by 3. It will be dense. It won't have just the diagonal entries. So you will have to solve the linear system of equations whatever way you want by Gaussian elimination if you have to. But it would still be algebraic. The idea that you can do all of this algebraically will still hold. So why don't you, as I'm doing it quietly on the board, write out that matrix, that linear system in matrix form. 3 by 3 matrix times alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3 equals 3 by 1 right hand side. Well, yes, it has lots of dot products, but they're just numbers. So I think when you first encounter the dot product, this looks a little overwhelming because it's so much, it looks like there's so much geometry going on. But for a specific set of vectors, it's just a 3 by 3 matrix. And this is just a 3 by 3 matrix too. 3 by, it's just a 3 by 1 matrix. And so you you're end up with a common 3 by 3 system. What can you tell me about this matrix? Is it symmetric? Yes, because the dot product is commutative. These two are the same, these two are the same, and these two are the same values. Is it positive definite? That will be a question for your homework. Yes, it is positive definite. Prove that it's positive definite. The proof is trivial as long as you're comfortable with the overall framework of what positive definite means. This is a very, very important matrix. We'll encounter in this course over and over again because it has to do with something as fundamental as decomposition as well as with something as fundamental as the dot product. So in linear algebra, this is called the Gram matrix. I don't like that name. In tensor calculus, this is called the metric. Sometimes it's called the dot product matrix. I prefer, being a big fan of tensor calculus, I prefer calling it the metric or the metric matrix. That doesn't sound so great. The metric. But in any case, we'll encounter this matrix in many different contexts all the time. So in conclusion, one by one, geometric ideas and geometric concepts fall to the dot product. 